Okay, first some preparatory exercise. I like to do Brahms exercise, in particular number 10. It's very good anyway, but for this age group it really helps a lot. It goes like this. I already practiced that hand separately by the way. And so on. In particular, I like to hold that Brahms didn't write that, that was my idea. Just uh, hold down the octave and then practice only the figures in between. It's a little harder. And you can play each note twice, perhaps. exercise where you're holding down notes and um, there's quite a lot of those that I like to do make sure that you don't force it down that you don't use force to keep the one note down that, that it's relaxed and that it's light ideally a hand position which is slightly rounded that's what works best for me in particular this exercise is very good if you also do the semitone higher <laughs> Also, add to the um, exercise by accenting instead of the fourth finger, you can try the third finger. And so on. I find that helps a lot, and then left hand is very similar. Now, let's get to the etude. I particularly had difficulty with this sort of thing. See already why probably my fingers are pretty wide, and so they get in each other's way. Most people might not have that difficulty. I don't know. Um, I do. I have this. It's terrible. Anyway, so one way that helps practice is here too. You can hold down one note. On top of that, I sometimes practice different uh, variations of it. And so on. Then we have these broken octaves. And I particularly wanted to try and get that clear because we are very often, sorry, you very often just hear this. And that's a bit of a shame, so I made an effort to... Especially this last one is very hard. You can practice it like this. And try practicing coming from above. Because you're not actually coming from above, but it's just a way to practice it. And then you can do this. Staying close to the keys helps, and practicing dotted rhythms. Okay, now comes the dreaded part in the left hand. Here I, tr I practice it by holding down the G sharp and doing this. You can take that further, play each note twice. Staccato in the same style, staying close to the keys if possible, as well as rhythmic alterations. And what I also like to do is add a few notes. a different note, typically one that you find gets swallowed a lot. I found that was a third note of each group of four. You can also stay on one for a while. And do rhythmic alterations. 
considerations with that in mind. accent different notes. There's never any harm in uh, trying them all, depending on how much time you want to invest in this. Okay, now let's skip to the really difficult passage. That's again, because my wifing is particularly difficult, there's no easy solution for that. You can tilt your hand a little bit like this, and then you have to angle the fingers a little bit more than I uh, would have wanted to do. Nonetheless, one has to work with what one has. I'll I think I'll show you on the second one, because that's a bit harder than the first one. This in particular. So let's get started. I'd hold down two at first. No, sorry, just this one. And then I'd do... Rhythmic alterations. thumb as well. Notice, it's terrible. twice here as well. It, why do I do that? Because it uh, sort of teaches your fingers to only touch the key very short uh, and let go immediately. That's very often the reason why one can't play faster because one pushes right down on the key and then gets stuck in it practically. Okay, we can take it even further, and I did, and I recommend you do as well. Hold down two notes, and then practice just the three in between. Same principle as with the Brahms Bacchus notes. Wait, let's just do this first. Rhythmic alteration as well, and then this one. And then with the thumb. Otherwise, it's not just not going to work. Hopefully, you don't have to do that. And same principle with the rest of the exercise. Now, I think the hardest few bars of the piece. I wanted to be able to play it clearly. It's also one of the nicest parts of the piece. And very often you don't hear it clearly, which is, I think, quite a shame, but it's, it's no doubt because of the ridiculous difficulty of it and because some people try to play it at insane speed. Anyway, so here are some exercises that help with that. Again, holding down notes with rhythmic alterations and then... Here, uh, same principle, just we hold down a different note. I like to hold down whatever I'm not using. Holding down, again, not with force. It's got to be easy. It's got to be with control. Things like that. And really, really difficult is this last one. We can add notes. And um, all this. Or. Also, 
I noticed whilst uh, studying this, certain notes like to get lost. And so I tried accenting them, in particular the last one. <laughs> example of some of the difficulties in this etude you have to coordinate arm movement with finger movement so you're you're jumping within passage work it's something you don't find in a lot of uh, studies and exercises in general which is why this piece is very educating I find okay the run after that is also very awkward <laughs> Practice it like this. Actually, I'll hold two down first. And then we can do this. And we can just do this. And you can also try this. Itself. Rhythmic alterations, obviously. You can also try this. practicing an octave higher it's just a bit easier to hear freak like me then you do most of those things another thing that likes to happen with this run is that you that it sort of starts okay and then it goes out of control <laughs> they, they happened a lot to me I presume that's normal one way to deal with that is you can deliberately stop or just get slower somewhere halfway in between so in the last one. Vary it and try it out. Sometimes this likes to happen just when you play the whole piece through and you just tell yourself well I'm just gonna stop there and then uh, or just slow down and then you relax a little bit. It helps you conceptualize it in your mind a little bit better because the problem is in your mind when you when this sort of thing goes out of control. It's not a finger work problem. This passage I like to practice like that. Also with rhythmic alteration, 
for some reason on this piano I had a hard time getting the left hand even, so I would do the usual thing. Sometimes just three. Next we have this passage, and then comes this very, very difficult part. You can practice that holding them down perhaps, or that. And various rhythmic alterations, I also like to Try different var uh, variations of it. Okay, and in the passage in general, I like to accent different notes sometimes. And things like that, also all with rhythmic alterations. Try to think of these as larger movements. It makes it easier to not have to concentrate on every single note. Okay, now comes one of the hardest runs ever. <laughs> Same, uh, playing two at the same time always. And that also with rhythmic alterations. Here it also helped having your hand a little bit tilted like that. Same thing with the left hand. Okay, the final arpeggio, someone suggested perhaps using the third finger on the way up and the fourth on the way, uh, on the way down. I suggest trying that, it might work quite well. Uh, I only heard about the idea after I'd played it and I didn't want to relearn it then yet. Next time maybe. Okay, now as for practicing it, um, I would do this with rhythmic alterations again, and then you can take it even further, perhaps without holding down this bit bar. On the way down, it's just the other way around. at the same time, not hold them, play them at the same time. Oh wait, it's just me at the top. It doesn't work right there. On the way, uh, on the way down, you can... That's all I can think of for now. If you have any suggestions or any questions, let me know in the comments. I hope that's useful. To those of you who subscribed, thank you very much. It's a huge encouragement. I love getting new subscribers. It's, I know there's a tiny channel, but that makes it all the more special when someone new subscribes. Anyway, thank you for watching. Take care and go practice.